All right, welcome back. Hananiga, geometry. Uh, today we're going to do section 2.2, inductive and deductive reasoning. And, and there's some laws that we're going to be dealing with and stuff. And this is a tough one to, under, a tough one to explain sometimes. So I'm going to do my best here. But here we go. Inductive is a conjecture, an unproven statement that is based on observations. Basically, inductive reasoning is you're using, um, I'll say common sense, or you're basically coming up with a pattern and thinking you know the, the next number. For instance, if I went uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and all of a sudden you ask, what's the next number? You would probably say 10. That's inductive reasoning. All right, so you're looking at a pattern and then trying to come up with a conjecture for what's going to happen next. So in this particular picture, I got a circle with one side with only one line going across. And the next one I got a circle with two lines. The next one I got a circle with three lines. And so my conjecture or my next guess was that this would have four lines. So one, two, three, four, and I would have one side or one pie filled in. So that is inductive reasoning. I am guessing based on a pattern. Now, making and testing. So consecutive integers follow each other in order. Three, four, five. And I can do other ones like seven, eight, nine. Or I can do other ones like 11, 12, 13. Those would be consecutive integers. Make a conjecture and test about the sum. Sum means addition. So if I added all these up, I'd get 12. If I added all these up, I'd get 24. If I added all these up, I'd get 36. And so just coming up with a conjecture. So here's my conjecture. If I take the middle number and multiply it by 3, it will always be the sum of three consecutive integers. And it works. And multiply by 3. And multiply by 3. A counterexample. A counterexample is to show a conjecture is true. Excuse me, to show a conjecture is true, you must show that all the cases are true. So a counterexample is to show something is false. So if I make a statement and you come up with a counterexample, my statement is now false because the counterexample is a, a specific case in which my conjecture is false. So here we go. A student makes the following conjecture about the sum of two numbers. Find a counterexample and disprove it. The sum of two numbers is always more than the greater number. So if I say the sum, that's addition, of two numbers is always more than the greater. Well, what happens if I end up getting a negative number? So the sum of two numbers is not always greater, more than the greater number. So notice this one is smaller than 7. So that's a counterexample. An example that makes the statement false. Deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is when you use facts, definitions, properties, or laws. And this is what we're going to talk a lot about today, is laws to form a ar logical argument. This is different than e inductive reasoning that uses patterns. Now, here, let's talk about the laws. Law of detachment. The law of detachment need a true conditional statement. Then you need the hypothesis, the P to be Q, P to be true, and then the conclusion would be true. So if a hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true, then the conclusion is also true. You will be given an if-then statement and the second statement. If it's valid, the conclusion will be restate the conclusion from the original if-then. All right, here we go. You ready? This is what an example. If two angles are congruent, then two angles have the same measure. Angle A is congruent to angle B. I then can conclude that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle. Excuse me, the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. Now for more general questions. If it's Wednesday, then Miss Schnapper will eat wings. Today is Wednesday. I then can conclude that Ms. Schnapper's eating wings. If it's nice outside, then classes can take place in a tent. It is nice outside, therefore I can conclude that classes can take place in a tent. So when you use the law of detachment, you're given an if-then, 
and told the if, you can then conclude the then. All right, so here we go. Use the law of detachment to write, if possible, from the given statement. If two segments have the same length, they are congruent. BC equals XY, I can conclude that BC and XY are congruent. If I win the lottery, then I'm opening a donkey rescue. I won the lottery. What can I conclude? I will open a donkey rescue. I apologize for my hand right. If Peyton gets an A on his spelling test, then he can play Xbox. Peyton got a 98% on the spelling test. Peyton can play Xbox. Law of syllogism. Law of syllogism is a little bit different. It's if, if you are given a if-then statement, and then you're given another if-then statement that has the same conclusion as its hypothesis. These two have to match in order to use the law of syllogism. So if hypothesis P, then conclusion Q. If conclu hypothesis Q, then R, I then can conclude an if-then statement that goes from P to R. You will be given two if-then statements of if, uh, if possible, your conclusion will be the third if-then statement. Here we go. If x is greater than 5, then x squared is greater than 25. If x squared is greater than 25, then x squared is greater than 20. Notice, the conclusion of one matches the hypothesis of the second. You then can make an if-then statement using the first p and the ending R. So you're using a little color here. This if with this then. And I don't know why it didn't go red for me. This then. If a polygon is regular, then all the interior angles of the polygon are congruent. If the polygon is regular, then all sides are congruent. This is not possible. Notice. The conclusion up here did not match the hypothesis. And therefore, it is not possible to use the law of, law of syllogism. If soccer practice is canceled, then you can go to the mall after school. If it's raining today, then the soccer practice is canceled. Again, no conclusion. The conclusion does not match, whoa, the conclusion does not match the hypothesis. So the last one does work now. If a figure is a rectangle, then all the interior angles are right angles. If a figure is a square, then all the interior angles are right angles. Again, no conclusion. I apologize. I thought we had a conclusion on the last one. All right. Comparing inductive and deductive. Again, inductive means that you're just making a conjecture. You're making a logical guess. Deductive is you're using laws or properties or given rules. Each time Monica kicks the ball up in the air, it returns to the ground. So the next time Monica kicks the ball up in the air, it will return to the ground. I would consider that to be deductive only because it's gravity. So there's a rule, there's a law, there's a property involved that once something goes up, it must come down. So I'm going to say deductive, even though maybe my colleagues would disagree. All reptiles are cold-blooded. So that's a rule. Parrots are not cold-blooded. Sue's pet parrot is not a reptile. That is definitely deductive. If the measure of an angle R is more than, by the way, this is supposed to be on your own, so go ahead and hit pause, and then I'll do it, my, do it for you. 
If the measure of angle R is more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, then the angle R is, right, is obtuse. The measure of angle R is 155 degrees. Using the law of attachment, we can conclude that angle R is obtuse. Here's the law of syllogism now. If you get an A on your math test, then you get to go to the movies. If you go to the movies, then you can watch your favorite actor. So, if you get an A on your math test, then you can watch, I ran out of space, your favorite actor. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher, and good luck.